good morning students we are again back discussing about the modern dance in america and today we will discuss about modern dance in america after the 1950s you know in america a new movement in the dance development began in 1950 The preceding years saw the dance artists of America emphasizing more on the themes. At the same time, they brought some incredible changes in technique, stage designs, use of music, and light. But they couldn't completely disregard the original structure of ballet. The dances of this period cast off the concept of storytelling through the movements of dance. They were averse to. illustrate the emotions on stage during this period we come across names of dancers who were inclined in developing their own approach to dance they are referred to as the first generation dancers of modern dance first generation of modern dance the very first name comes in our mind is martha graham She was born in 1894 in a small city outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Her father was an alienist, the term then used to describe a physician who specialized in human psychology. Dr. Graham was particularly interested in the way people used their bodies and interest that he passed on to his eldest daughter Martha. In years to come Martha often repeated his father's dictum movement never lies In 1908 the Graham family moved to Santa Barbara California Graham finished her secondary schooling attended a school of dramatics for 3 years and then in 1916 began studying at Denison During the next 7 years Graham evolved from a student to a teacher to one of the company's best known performers. She often worked at Ted Schon's partner and became the co-star of Zorschil, his famous duet about an Indian girl and an Aztec emperor. In 1923 Graham left Denison and joined the Greenwich Village Follies where she became popular for her presentations in 1925 she left the Follies and started an independent career she was appointed as teacher in the Eastman School of Music in Rochester New York and the John Murray Anderson School in New York City In 1926 her company made its debut in New York City by 1927 Graham left the jobs of the Eastman and Anderson schools and started working full time as a dancer and choreographer in New York City she soon began working with Louis Horst Horst was attached to Denison where he had been the music composer director and resident accompanist horst held a primary position in the modern dance scene of the 1920s 30s and 40s when he was the accompanist for almost all the leading dancers in new york city but his closest association was with martha graham whose artistic vision he remained devoted to throughout his lifetime Horst introduced Graham to the work of the great German modern dancer Mary Wigman and to the innovations of the school of modern painting including the works of the cubists and Vasily Kandinsky but perhaps most importantly Horst taught Graham about musical form and encouraged her to work with contemporary composers rather than making dances to 18th and 19th century music as her solo dance predecessors had done with such inspiration by 1930 she was beginning to identify a new system of movement and new principles of choreography she looked afresh into the delsartian 
principle of tension and relaxation. Graham devised a method of breathing control called contraction and release. For her, movement or originated in the tension of a contracted muscle and continued in the flow of energy released from the body as the muscle relaxed. Critics and audiences soon became accustomed to Graham's innovative style of movement and she developed a following among serious dance patrons, scholars and critics. During the early 1930s, her work was focused on emotional themes. Her renowned solo piece, Lamentation, was a portrait of a grieving woman sitting alone on a bench and moving to a grief-stricken piano score. In Primitive Mysteries, Graham combined the religious rites of American Indians with an exploration of other religious rites like the Pagan and Catholic ceremonies. Here Graham danced as the priestess called the Virgin and her group portrays independent women who surround her and worship her. This choreography focuses firmly on the organization of dancers rather than on the solo figure pointing to a fundamental shift in the way Graham was approaching the area of dance. The story of the dance uses only conceptual movement expressions to bring its story to life and is not presented in a factual manner. The solo piece Frontier in 1935 and the work Appalachian Spring 1944 were two important works of Graham. In both the works, Graham used a simple set designed by the Japanese sculptor Isamu Noguchi to help suggest the frontier landscape. Her own movements brought in a fresh look to the technique innovated by her. Appalachian Spring clearly illustrates how Graham adapted her percussive angular movement style to fit the period of setting of the piece. Graham's movement system and her theory of contraction and release are pivotal to the development of modern dance in the United States. Graham was the first modern dance choreographer to completely use collaborations with other modern artists to create her dance theatre masterpieces. Her collaboration with Isamu Noguchi and Aaron Copland in Appalachian Spring, for example, remains one of the dance's great masterpieces. Martha Graham died in 1991 after a career that lasted 75 years and produced some of the greatest masterpieces of the American modern dance. The Martha Graham Dance Company is still a vital force and can be seen in residence in New York City and on tour. Doris Humphrey was born in 1895 at Illinois and grew up in Chicago. Her father operated a residence home for vaudeville performers called the Palace Hotel and her mother offered piano lessons. Humphrey studied piano, ballet, ballroom dance, Americanized del Sarte and del Croze system of eurythmics. A talented dancer, she began teaching ballet and interpretative dance to children when she was 15. Humphrey moved to California and joined Denison in 1917. As a favorite of Ruth and Dennis, she started teaching classes and performing with the company in featured roles. Though Martha Graham was a fellow teacher and performer, Humphrey and Graham were not close. Humphrey made lifelong artistic and personal relationship with other Denison colleagues, most notably Pauline Lawrence and Charles Widman. Lawrence was a primary advisor and a costume designer who was close to Humphrey until her death in 1958. Charles Widman was Humphrey's choreographic and dance partner in the 1920s and 1930s and was himself a key figure in the development of the American modern dance. Humphrey began her choreographic career while at Denison, where she created with St. Denis famous pieces like Soaring 
set to the Schumann score of the same title and sonata pathetic to the Beethoven score. In 1928, Humphrey and Charles Widman left the Danishan company and initiated their own school and company. Humphrey thought of moving away from the sentimentalism and romanticism of the Danishan and developed a new dance repertoire and approach that may be recognized as modern. Like Isadora Duncan and Martha Graham, Doris Humphrey was interested in the fundamental importance of tension and relaxation in the body and used it as the foundation of her own system of movement principles. She called her version of the contraction and release of muscles and of the breath cycle fall and recovery. Unlike Graham who stressed the tension in the cycle, Humphrey located the height or apex of the continuum in the suspension of tension. As a result, her vocabulary was based on the notion that all movement patterns fall into three divisions, opposition, succession and unison and that all movement characteristics fall into three divisions, sharp accent, sustained flow and rest. She codified this system in her book, The Art of Making Dances. In 1931, Humphrey and Widman companies and their school were well established in New York City. Humphrey was considered by most critics to be a major innovator of the new modern dance. Her theory of fall and recovery and the technique that sprang from it was the foundation of her teaching method and her choreography. Underlying it, according to Humphrey, was the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche's idea about the split in the human psyche between each person's Apollonian side, rational, intellectual, and our Dionysian side, chaotic, emotional. The true essence of the modern dance was the movement that happened in between these extremes which Humphrey labelled the arc between two deaths. From the beginning, her choreography highlighted the relationship between movement and music, emphasizing their formal qualities like structure, design and dynamic. In dances like Air for the G Strings in 1928, and variations on a theme of Handel, 1931, the choreographer gave physical life to the music of Bach and Brahms. She did not attempt to tell a story or to evoke a specific emotion. Instead, Humphrey was interested in purely aesthetic considerations. In her use of these abstract principles of composition, Humphrey was perhaps the most modern of the early modern dance innovators. After her original company disbanded in the early 1940s, Humphrey was appointed the artistic director of the Joe Lehman's dance troupe. Lehman himself an important figure in the American modern dance tradition was a student and company dancer with Humphrey Widman in the 1930s and early 1940s. Today. Doris Humphrey's movement system and her theory of fall and recovery live on in the work of a long time of dance artists. Doris Humphrey died in 1958. Charles Widman was one of the gigantic figures of American modern dance and a pioneer in the development of the art form. Born in Lincoln, Nebraska, in 1901, his artistic interests and abilities were evident from an early age. From the time he attended his first performance of the Denishan Company, he was determined to become a dancer and at age 19, he received a scholarship to the Denishan School. Widman soon became a leading Denishan dancer, partnering Martha Graham and replacing Ted Sean in important roles. During an extended tour of the Far East, his interest in the Asian dance forms was aroused and he 
began studies with a Japanese teacher. In 1927, he and Doris Humphrey left Denison in protest against the romanticism of the repertory and together they established a company and a school devoted to exploring a new aesthetic. It was the work of this company and that of their contemporaries Martha Graham and Hanya Home, which has come to be known as modern dance. Humphrey and Widman established new principles of technique involving gravity, fall and recovery, sustained, suspended and vibratory movement. Incorporating these innovative techniques, the two pioneers choreographed many works together. Among them, Lysistrata, School of Husbands and Alcina Suit are famous. After Humphrey's retirement from performing in 1945, Widman continued to create dances, perform and teach. He was especially popular at colleges and universities throughout the United States where he taught many master classes and repertory workshops. He established a school and company of his own, the Charles Widman School of Modern Dance and the Charles Widman Theatre Dance Company. In 1960, he created and established the expression of two arts theatre in New York City where despite the limitations of the small space, he presented regular weekly performances until his death. In his long teaching career, Widman influenced a great many dancers among the best known artists and directors who studied with him are Jose Lehman. Jack Cole, Jenny Kelly, Sibyl Scherer, Eleanor King, Bob Fosse and Alvin Ali. Well, the second generation of modern dance, we find that the Americans and the Afro-Americans working together. By the end of the Second World War, Many new choreographers had emerged from the first generation of modern dancers. These dancers broke away from all the rules that had been set for them by their predecessors. This new generation of dancers shaped dances that had no subject and articulated no passion. They had no responsibility to carry on the theories of contraction and release that is of Martha Graham's or fall and recovery that is of Doris Humphrey. These choreographers had no urge to strengthen or enlighten their audience, while Jose Lehman utilized the Mexican heritage, in his words, the Moors Pavane, and there is a time while the work of Alvin Nicolais and Mare Louis reflects the German influence of their teacher Hanya Holm, but is renowned for dance theatre using props, costumes, lighting and effects to transform the body. Others radically departed from their dance roots. Principal among these were three Graham's major dancers, Mars Cunningham, Eric Hawkins and Paul Taylor. Mars Cunningham was from Washington state. His first formal dance training was at Cornish College in Seattle. From 1939 to 1945, he was a soloist in Martha's company. His first solo show came in 1944 and he formed the Mars Cunningham Company in 1953. He left the Martha Graham Company in 1945 after having originated several important solo roles with her company, including the preacher in Appalachian Spring. He admired and learned from Graham, but wasn't convinced by certain aspects of her work, particularly the idea that every movement in a dance had to have a meaning. He was interested in investigating the procedure of movement and the potential of the art form standing apart from explicit emotional and psychological association. Around this time, Cunningham choreographed independently with John Cage. He started his own company in 1953 at the Black Mountain College 
Cunningham designed his dances in a completely unique manner that was never seen before. Cunningham's dance did not have a set plot or set characters. There were times when he would write the name of a movement, the name of a dancer, a length of time and a space on the stage. Then he would toss a dice to dip into a bag to decide what dancers would do, what movement, how long and where. This technique is famous as the chance theory, renowned as one of the greatest and most influential choreographers of the 20th century, Cunningham was also an accomplished dancer. He appeared on stage into his 60s. He choreographed a total of 150 dances and 800 events, performances as well suited to the unconventional spaces like in gyms, armories and many other places, open spaces which combined elements of dance, scenery, lighting in unpredictable ways. Cunningham is notable for having impacted artists outside of dance with his progressive approach and through his extensive interdisciplinary collaborations with visual artists. This would also include Robert Rosenberg and Jasper Jones and musicians including John Cage, Christian Wolff and Morton Fredman. His collaborations produced an influential body of work in music and visual art as well as dance. Cunningham was forward thinking. Later in his career, he experimented with using computer programs and motion capture technology to create elements of his dances. Before he died in 2006, he created a legacy plan outlining how he would like his company to be run and left a thorough archive of digitized information, plans and films preserving his work. Another exceptionally prominent dancer of this period was Anna Soloko. Soloko began her dancing career with Martha Graham. She learnt with Louis Horst at the neighborhood playhouse where she became Horst's assistant and most prominent composition student. Sokolo created the first dance company in Mexico. Anna Soloko's choreography often dealt with the themes of alienation, isolation and despair. Her famous work was anti-war trilogy. Soloko has supplied the world with her unique modern choreography for almost 70 years. Paul Taylor was brought up in Washington DC and studied dance at Juilliard. From 1955 to 1962, Taylor was a compelling soloist performer with the Martha Graham Dance Company. However, Taylor broke away from Graham to choreograph his own pieces and is most well known for his fascinating choreography. Two of his most sensational pieces are Three Epitaphs and Aureole. Paul Taylor turns everyday movement into breathtaking art of heart-wrenching beauty, points dazzling tableau that sizzles with passion and exposes the cloud in every silver lining. Eric Hawkins was born in Colorado and went to Harvard University and wanted to study Greek culture. Hawkins saw Harold Kreutzberg and Yvonne Georgi dance and decided that he wanted to be a dancer. He was the first American student in George Balanchine's School of American Ballet. Later, Eric Hawkins became Martha Graham's first male dancer. Hawkins strongly thought that live music in the theatre would be more powerful for the dance and would render a diverse beauty to the production. Hawkins is known as one of the pioneers of modern dance through his original choreography and evolution of a new theory and technique of modern dance. Another important choreographer was Alvin Nicolais. 
He was an American choreographer, composer and designer whose dances were abstract and united movements with a mixture of technological special effects and a total liberty from conventional patterns and techniques. Nikolai started his dance study around 1935 with Truda Cashman, who was a student of modern dancer Mary Wigman. In 1937, he founded a dance school and company in Hartford, Connecticut and was director of the dance department of Hart School of Music, now part of the University of Hartford, from 1940 to 42 and again from 46 to 49. Nikolais took up dance studies with Hania Hum and was engaged as her assistant. In 1948, he joined the Henry Street Settlement in New York City and established its School of Modern Dance, where he became artistic director of its playhouse originally called the Playhouse Dance Company, originally called the Playhouse Dance Company, the Nikolai's Dance Theatre was formed in 1951. In 1953, the company presented Nikolai's first major work, masks, props and mobiles, in which the dancers were wrapped in stretch fabric to create extraordinary imaginary shapes. In the next choreographies, like the Kaleidoscope, which was produced in 1956, Allegory was produced in 59, Totem was produced in 60s and Imago 63. In all these, Nicolas experiment in the fundamental art of theatre, which is a combination of motion, sound, shape and colour, each given relatively equal emphasis. His other works comprise of tent, scenario, Guignol, Countdown, Talisman and so many. Nikolai's often composed electronic scores for these productions. Nikolai's made films on his works as well as broadcasts on American and British television. The first African American dance company was founded in the 1960s by Alvin Ailey. His company rose to eminence with his characteristic choreography, integration of past and current subject matter. Alvin Ailey American Dance Theatre has toured in over 70 countries as the first African American company to represent the United States abroad through a State Department sponsored tour to Russia in 1970s. Ailey's works about African American culture, blue suits and revelations brought fame. Revelations illustrate the damage of isolation and the role of trust. The repertory includes a wide spectrum of choreographers. The Ailey School have presented works by Dunham, Primus, Betty and McKay. The contemporary dance composers such as George Faison, Camille Brown, Willis Dove and Dance Motion, choreographers Joala Villa Joseller, Ronald K. Brown and Rennie Harris. 1960s experimentalists continued in the 1970s. There were two camps of modern dance, technique based dance and the anti technique based dance. Lar Lubovitch, Jennifer Mueller, Lucinda Childs and Twala Tharp choreographed dances requiring technique. And on the other side, Meredith Monk, Martha Clark, Elizabeth Sturb, Pibolobs and Anna Halprin, the purpose was to conceptualize a different idiom of dance. Today, many groundbreaking choreographers and companies like Martha Graham, Mars Cunningham, Paul Teller, Bill T. Jones, Twala Tharp, Mark Morris, Trisha Brown and Alvin Ailey continue to exert influence. Hundreds of modern dance choreographers create work in the US and abroad. Notable American modern dance makers include Susan Marshall, Sarah McKelson, Babe Miller, John Jaspers, Eko and Koma Wale, Cardona, Jane Comfer, David Parsons, David Dorfman, 
Lisa Lerman, Annie B. Parson, Stephen Petronio, Tere O. Canor, Reggie Wilson, Vanira Castro, Miguel Duerte, Nora Chipayume, Kyle Abraham, Azure Barton, Brian Brooks and so many. Today international exchange has accelerated enriching the world of dance. Influences on American dance include the Japanese Bhutto, German dance theater, classical Indian dance, Chinese dance and capoeira. Contemporary black choreographers has expanded their scope collaborating with African companies.